coming out for me was definitely not something that I even remotely thought about, even though I knew from about age 13 that I was, that I was gay. I was raised in a very religious and kind of narrow-minded where if you didn't believe exactly what we believed, then for lack of a better word, you were going to hell. So I decided to go in the military. In my mind, it was like, you know, if I could go in the Marine Corps and I could, I could be a Marine, I'm definitely not gay. I even went as far as getting married and, and we were together for a little over a year. After we separated, it was kind of like this thing of, I'm just gonna come out to my friends. I was so afraid that I would get kicked out. I don't wanna get a dishonorable discharge. Anybody that's in the military knows where the big five-ton truck is. I was in one that actually flipped over and killed three guys. That led to a lot of issues, both mental health-wise and physically. I lost house, car, and ended up being in the shelter for 16 months. Looking back at that time period, I always say that it was a learning experience. My name is Michael Bishop Salyer. I am a vocational development specialist with the Durham VA Medical Center. I'm also a veteran, a Marine Corps veteran. My role in the VA is making sure that that veteran coming in is comfortable with their mental health doctor, that they can get the things that they need without having somebody judge them. It is very difficult for veterans to ask for help. We don't want to depend on anybody. The military teaches you to work as a team to try to get a, the mission accomplished. If the whole team is gone and you're the only one left, you've got to go do it no matter what. It's hard to forget that mentality. LGBT plus veterans have a much higher rate of suicide because they feel alone. They feel like there's nobody paying attention to them. I love representing the VA and telling vets that, you know, please come and get services. You've, you've earned them. We want you to come in. We want to work with you. We want to get you the things that you deserve and you've earned. Inclusion means you're accepted for who you are. I'm, I'm a brother, I'm a son, I'm a veteran, I am LGBT. All of that makes up the whole, the whole me. LGBTQ plus, I always joke and say we call it the alphabet suit because we, we want to be inclusive. Lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, queer, questioning. And then the plus is for everybody else that wants to be a part of the community that doesn't even know their definition yet. Gender identity really is how you see yourself to be able to say whether you are male or female or non-binary or you're transgender. For somebody that's working with somebody, trying to work through those things, you have to be prepared for them to go through different transitions and to figure out what they want as a person. Non-binary person is somebody who doesn't want to be defined. We as a society, we are so bad about putting people in the you know, male and female box. You know, we, we put, and we put ourselves in boxes. And somebody that's non-binary, they, they don't want to be in a box. Your sexual orientation doesn't necessarily have to fit with how you identify. You may be a male that identifies as gay, or you may be a lesbian who identifies as male. Your sexual orientation is who you want to love. What I think is so great about our community is we are open. We want people to be part of our group. The biggest thing I can tell somebody who has never worked with somebody that's LGBT is there's resources out there for you to read. And most LGBT people will tell you what you want to know. Don't be afraid to ask questions. What pronoun would you like me to use? What name would you like me to use? Because they may be a different name than their legal name is right at this point. They may want to be called a different pronoun than what they physically appear. Have something rainbow in the room, a magnet, a rainbow pin on your lanyard, or 
a ribbon, something that I can look at you and say, okay, I know that I can trust you. When I was at the shelter, you know, you, you go in there apprehensive as it is, and you're homeless and you're in there with 150 other people. And you don't know how you're going to be treated. I was taken in and those vets didn't care that I was LGBT. They took me in in my life and it made a difference telling me, okay, let's make a list of, of things that you can do that we can work on to get you out of here. The biggest thing I'd want somebody to walk away from this training is to just make sure they treat that person with respect. Ask the questions. You want them to know you want to work with them. Treat them as human beings. Their issues are real. You want to make sure that they know you're there to help them in recovery. That's the key.